point in time do we go back to where either we can find an example of uh, benevolent capitalism? Oh, I got a great one. I, I saw this uh, a few days ago. Um, if you've ever signed on to buy Ticketmaster or if you want to set up a Facebook account, you have to do that, that two word catch, whatever it's oh, called. Catch one. Yeah. Um, you know why there's two words instead of just one? So, what happened was uh, you digitalize books. Everyone's digitizing books. And what happens is you scan it and you have an image of text. And then the computer will scan that image and try to pull out text it recognizes. Um, but it can only recognize if it uh, about 10% of the words, and if it's from 1954, you can only recognize about 70% of the words. So there's a big amount that's left unidentified. And what they did was they took the words that were unidentified and they put it within this the old cat, I don't know what it was called. Caption. Caption. Okay. Um, so you have two words. One of them is the word that the computer doesn't know how to recognize, and one that it does. So you type it both, and then it'll start recognizing that that's the word. Um, so you have 10 people doing it, if all 10 or 9 write the word the same way, they put that in the bank, uh, the storage bank, of uh, course to be recognized, to progress um, digitization of books and make it more successful. successful. Uh, how it's set up right now was about a, a million words per day are recognized now, if not more. Um, and so they looked at it and said, okay, how can we harness this energy to be benevolent and moving forward? Translating the web. 90% of the web is in English. So if you don't speak English, you're missing out on 90% of the benefit of, of the web. Now, probably most of the web is foreign, but you know, if you still have English, you still, still benefit to somebody. Uh, and what they found was um, you have people translating for you. If you have a professional translator, it's going to cost about $50 million just to trans translate Wikipedia, which is only a small percentage of the web. Um, so it's very expensive if you have professionals, but if you have um, typical everyday individuals, it's called Duolingo, it's in a beta for it, you guys want to sign up. Uh, they'll give you a simple sentence from a newspaper, from like Venezuela if you want to learn, or from Uruguay if you want to learn Spanish. Um, and they'll give you the definition of each word in there, and then you try to construct it in the sentence. And you have about 10 people doing this, and they all come together and say, okay, like, everyone posted this, this is what the consensus is kind of is, and we'll move it forward. Um, and it's completely free if you want to learn this process. It's translating the web, so people are benefiting from both sides. You're learning a new language, and they found out it's actually just as effective as Rosetta Stone, which costs $600. And this is a free program, so you're learning a new language, so poor people or people with low income can't gain that knowledge. And all these uh, businesses or newspapers or outlets that are in a foreign language now get this stuff translated to a new language so that more people can get access to it. And it's completely free on both sides because both sides are benefiting. You mean, that sounds like a good, a good argument for modernism. I, I in, the, in the non-status sense. Yeah, I, and, and to be perfectly honest, I mean, if we had a system where I knew that communism would work for people who would be benevolent, that would be amazing. If, you're, if you have a natural incentive that a lot of people have to, to gain power and strength, um, communism can't have a place. I think it would be very beneficial in a small setting, so it would be better to have small local governments and that kind of thing. It's been for my life. Yeah, no, I completely, I completely agree with that, but I think that there's a certain... Test, there's a contested terrain to where I think both uh, state communists and like status communists and status capitalists um, both have this either either they either they believe just in the benevolence of people the people are always going to be good or they believe in like the inherent evil of people the people are always going to be selfish to me like I think neither of those are the case you're always you're going to have some people who are just who want to help Mother Teresa's in, and then you're going to have people who are burning bales who want to take advantage of the situation. So you're not going to have everyone who's not going to be malevolent and selfish. And all malevolent are all selfish. So you're going to have that gray area. And I think we can harness that energy in a positive way. My problem with communism is the inability to dissent. If you're in a community, it all has to be for the collective good. If I disagree, I don't have to Well, if you have communism, you're going to have a social structure that. Places to state if you have a decision made. Yeah. 
whether it be called government or people from public, you're yeah, still having right. decisions made for the collective. How how products are produced, how certain means are made. In terms of what you're talking about, state, like yeah. state socialism. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, you're going to have people make decisions on how things are produced uh, and, and what the outcomes are. I think that the example, let's say we take the example of the Soviet Union, and we take the example of the United States. To me, I don't see any, I don't see that much difference in terms of like top-down structures, hierarchy, um, government collusion between government yeah. and private and, enterprise. And, and I would completely agree. Right now, there is, we don't have free markets. We don't have we have corporatism, crony capitalism, where you have corporations and government working together to kind of control the individual and then say like this is how things are going to be. Um, I think the only difference really is our ability to dissent. I have friends in Russia who, um, if they spoke up like this, they'd be in prison. And there wouldn't be uh, a court. I, I, I had a friend, um, we were talking, he said, you know, about three months ago, this was in 2009, the military came into a small town and took all the men and just took them out and beat them up as a training exercise. Sure. And the news media never covered it. And they control internet, dissent, because if you dissent against the government, that's fearful, you, you might take away the state or the corporation's power, and they don't want that. Um, same thing with the tariffs of the sugar. They're not going to let people really produce a lot of stuff on why we shouldn't have that tariff, because that's, that's a problem. That's big money. And if anyone has big money, they, they want to keep it. So if I wanted to be honest about the tariff, um, it would be much more difficult kind of have that intellectual discussion about the tariff and sugar. Well, I'm curious, that. actually, to go back to your model of the capture, I'm curious how that, how you think that scales, because it seems to me that it's su it's super interesting. I like that um, concept, but the, the thing about it is it seems like you have to be able to, you have to be able to pull off the motive and make it something else. Like, for example, well, in your example, people want to learn Spanish, so they're willing to put in whatever, however long it takes to translate one sentence, and then you get the benefit on the other side. But you're, you're able, through a clever model and through distribution across the internet, you're able to do that. But that, that seems to me it has limitations that I don't know how much so you put the into. the limitation of creating that on a wider scale? Or, or for different, yeah. for different so products or for the production know, of different that things. That doesn't mean that it's not out there. No, it's, not that, so yeah, no, and, I, and that's what I love about a lot of parts of free markets is you have that reward, the trial and error. You have an entrepreneur who says, you know, I want to translate the web. This is how I think it would be acceptable. I think, yeah, uh, the one interesting thing, oh, sorry, go oh, about that though is, I mean, I think uh, you're starting to look at getting, looking at the true, where the true value lies in an exchange uh, and, and how you can use that to change the economic model. Whereas, kind of an assumption of capitalism is that the value is in capital means of production or in, you know, you can translate that to directly I, I to currency. I yeah, I don't see it as so much the, the, the value is the money. Um, money is just, should really be neutral in the system, and that's more of an economic discussion than anything. But um, to create value, I have to create value. So if I wanted to get your money or your value, to get your labor to me, I have to create something that you want, and I have to, I have to put it at a price that he feels acceptable with it. If I worked four hours and I made $100, I have $100. Um, I need to find something that's worth $100, otherwise I'm not gonna spend it. If I go to a restaurant and I look between a cheeseburger and a grilled cheese, one's gonna be more expensive. Which one do I value more? The experience of eating the cheeseburger or the value saving and the grilled cheese? Um, you have to have entrepreneurs looking to create those values those opportunities so that you look at it and you go, okay, this is a good deal. Right. And, and Instead of being forced, where if I went and I said, like, I have to buy this for $10, I don't want to buy it, but I have to, that's bullshit. But in a free market, it's $10, I don't want it for $10, I'll wait till it's eight. Or you know what, I'm going to take my money to somewhere else, they're charging me 11 but I can give me a better customer service. And so you have that competition, which enables the consumer to be more in control, and then you have producers who are creating value for people. People walk away both winners. And I think of it as like natural selection um, because you have the people who create more value, your consumers are going to go to that, versus people who are inefficient, um, you know, aren't doing very good, they're eventually going to go out of business. And I think the problem is like, you know, with the bailouts, the government came in and said, oh, well, you failed, you didn't do what, you know, as good as you're supposed to. Oh, well, that's okay, we're going to, you know, give you tax, tax, we're going to take taxpayers' money and pay you anything. That's, you know, that's what the problem is. Well, yeah, and actually, uh, that 
ties into something you were saying about kind of I'm glad when I showed up and started with the uh, financing of like entrepreneurs. You know, I mean, the banking system right now, you as a small entrepreneur, you can't get finance yet. Oh, yet I the can't. banking system is. You know, but, but, the big banks are tanking, but getting bailed out, and why not take that money and just, I mean, just a small amount and say, okay, here's venture capital at 2% or 3% yeah. as a government program, and then just, you know, let entrepreneurs loose. Banking is such a heavily regulated industry, uh, but people have gotten around it. You can go online and get loans, and you can shop for people that you want to give loans to. So, uh, you know, I, I could write a story about my peanut company and post it on the website. And say we need a one million dollar, uh, ten thousand dollar loan, and then I can shop through it. And go, okay, I have a hundred dollars, or I have a thousand dollars. I'm going to loan a hundred dollars to all these different people, ten, ten different people, and I can pick. I can say, all right, you know what? I really like this mission statement. I think they're going to do great things. I don't know if they're going to be profitable, but I, I like the idea. I want to take the risk with them. Um, you can't see that in the banking system. Right. Individuals can't really make those decisions. But now, so what happened was you had a producer recognize that people wanted to do this, wanted to help out small businesses, help out individuals. So they created a forum where you could meet people who had money to lend and people who needed money. And now they got together. And it, I don't know the name of it. So you can Google it, find it. But it, it's, it's amazing. You can you can loan people money for Christmas. And say, all right, like, uh, I don't get my bonus till February because I'm part of a seasonal job, but I want my kids to have X, Y, and Z. You can give the money. Now, obviously, there's risk. You might not get it, but then you can re report back, like on eBay. You buy something and they don't send it to you, they get a bad flag, and then they have to lower their prices to get people to, to rebuy it from them. Well, there's, definitely a lot of, there's definitely a lot of innovation, I think. Um, and part of what I hear you saying is that you know these entrepreneurs that really need to build in value in, in products that social value to yeah. things that are good and, and people will people will line up behind that um, but but a lot of times I mean it has to be really not you really have to show people <laughs> value and you kind of beat them over the head with it before they'll really you know, go for it if I had an option to invest in a company that was gonna make a million dollars but it was gonna destroy X Y and Z and pollute the earth and it's gonna treat its workers like shit and it's gonna be a crappy product and then I have another one that's going to say like we're only going to make a hundred thousand. I'm pretty sure no one's going to want to invest in the evil one, even though there might be a lot of profit. I mean, you're going to have some people who are going to take advantage of it, but morally, I think it would be more acceptable to do this. And, and, and in a free market where there's free transition or transformation of information, uh, if I knew my boss or, or if I knew my neighbor gave money to this evil corporation, I'm going to adjust how I perceive them and how I behave towards I'm an individual, and I think if we allow the free market, people can make those the, the, the interaction. Yeah, I don't know. People have an incredible capacity to not pay attention to that, though. Like, where in terms of like, if you're investing in your 401k, I mean, you're not. People don't, know what people don't look at yeah, yeah no exactly. Looks at their 401k and that's just going right into how much money is it, let alone like what exactly. mutual funds. So that allows the corporation yeah. to behave in a way that's disconnected from the consumer, or you know, that person gets the money out of it, but they don't really have to be connected to the behavior of the corporation. It's just like yeah. these layers of, of uh, irresponsibility, like insulation of irresponsibility. I think that needs to be yeah. kind of broken down in a big way free markets before are, yeah. entrepreneurs will be able to come up free with Free markets are scary because it really reinforces personal responsibility. If you're gonna buy a product, you have to understand what you're really buying into. Because it's a free market and uh, you can't rely on, well, they went through all these regulations, so it must be fine. I have to actually know what's going on. And that, you create a lot of responsibility, not only on the producer to do something to create value, but the consumer to understand what, what value they're actually buying. And that can be scary to a lot of people because, you know, maybe not here where people want to engage the community. But you take someone down in Phoenix who just, I just want to buy something. I don't care where it's from. If it went through the rules and regulations, it must be fine. It's like, well, if the rules and regulations are immoral and unjust, that product's immoral and unjust, and you're still supporting it. Yeah, it tends to be people who are disenfranchised already that don't have time to do the research or whatever, they just want to feed their kids, so. I think one, I think one thing that comes up, there actually there's two things. Uh, one of them is that you, when you reduce things to competition, you, to where it's like, a, if, or if you level the playing field and reduce things to just competition, there's, 
even though I'm not a Marxist, I still think Marx's idea of kind of talking about the coercive laws of competition, to whereas it's like the idea that you can go somewhere else and get it for less is on is built upon certain conditions that like if this person's like, well, I want to be able to grow my business, I want to be able to produce it quicker um, with you know less labor costs, you know, I'll start undercutting labor. Um, and to where that's having that idea of kind of like a very kind of like free for all competition, you know, doesn't take that into account. And I guess the second thing that kind of goes along with that is that if we kind of let people go, if we let the market dictate and not government dictate, I don't, there's, I don't think capitalism can fly without a government. For, for this sole reason is it's that when, let's say, we all decide that we don't like what Wells Fargo is doing, and we say, look, well, let's go sell Wells Fargo, or let's, like, you know, go and take down Wells Fargo. Yeah. You know, who stands in front of us from, from doing something about that? The state does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's always been the case with aristocratic investment. I, 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 so. I think if you live in the power, it's a, I want to touch on a few things, but if you live in the power of, of the of government, um, you don't need to go in and destroy Wells Fargo to get rid of it. You stop using it. You know? uh, but back to your philosophy, or you, you brought up, if I want to grow my market share, I have to reduce costs, right? And you said undercut labor. Well, well labor, labor's always the first one. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, it's always uh, usually the most easiest one. Like, uh, so there, there's two ways you can go about it. You can actually try to become more productive and try innovation and, and investment in that, research and development, or you can undercut labor. But what happens when you undercut labor is you, those are individuals that are going to come around and they should have a right to protest and say, look, and if they're protesting it, you walk through that door and you still buy it, you know, shame on you, I guess, but, sure. but they have a right to, they have a right as an employee to try to sell a product at what they want, and the employee, the employee has a right to agree or disagree or, and move on. I mean, if I undercut my labor uh, and they went to my competitor and they, I lost out. The information on my system is now in my competitor's hands because they're willing to pay it. And not only that, they can go around like that, pissed off individual is a marketing tool. They can go around and tell their friends don't buy from Starbucks, buy from coffee. Yeah, I understand that, but I think that there's there's the it's that it's it's as if the, the labor that people do and the, and the wage that they get as a result of that is like superfluous or for leisure things. Usually the wage that whether that wage is like a couple of pennies a day or whether that wage is, you know, minimum wage relative to, you know, the inflation in different economies, you know, that is usually for the purpose of purchasing, you know, uh, shelter, food, to where it's not just that, like that. The, oh, argu so the argument, the argument, you just, is not just money, but it's, it's a well-being. Right. Exactly. To where it's not, it's not just that you can, well, I can just quit my, I have to quit my job. So glad you brought that up. Um, if maybe you remember something. So you talked about uh, mutual aid before, well, much earlier. Um, I did a lot of work on healthcare before discussions, and. We had mutual aid in healthcare uh, in like the 1860s up to about 1923, and what it would, would be would be like a social fraternity, uh, the Elk Club. So you'd get together in these Elk Club, and uh, you'd, what happened is you'd pay a dollar's wage, a day's wage in the system, and it was kind of like a pension. And they would hire doctors, not from the Ivy League, but people who came from other schools. Doctors competed to get these contracts, these pension contracts, because they got a steady income. And then the workers got uh, health care for the year. They could call the doctor in. I guess what you're describing is a future meeting. Uh, it, it's, well, you, you, you paid into the system and you got health care and then you also got workers comp so if you got injured on the job. And it, this was actually really directed towards minorities. It was usually like the Irish club or uh, the Germans. So you come into Pennsylvania and you become part of this community. And what happened was these were extremely um, productive because, again, you had doctors competing to get these contracts by saying, well, I'll take this price, we're all offering all these services um, to get it so that I can get this contract. Um, the pension said, well, we have all this money, what, like, what can you do for us? And workers were able, workers' families were able to benefit. So it wasn't just healthcare, like if, you, if your son was sick, the doctor would come to you. Uh, if you got injured on the job, they would they'd pay and take care of that stuff. Um, if you die, they had a, a system of health insurance all broken into it. And what happened was the American Medical Association said, 
we will not provide a license to a doctor, even if you've graduated from school, if you are part of the system. And it went almost non-existent in a year. And, and I mean, you had a system where a day's wage got you all these benefits for a whole year. And it was shut down because, and the argument was, you're too, it's too socialistic. It's too much of co it's too much communism. And the government didn't want that. Even though it was completely voluntary. Was it just that the government didn't want that, or there there, there are people in collusion? Oh, it's collusion. So you had the AMA saying, well, we don't like the system because we really can't control it so much. We're going to go and use the government because the government really is one size fits all. If you can get the government to say something, it is. And so they used it and they destroyed a system that was so beneficial to a lot of immigrants who came over not having the access to an Ivy League doctor and they still got good care and treatment. And it wasn't like third world conditions. I mean, these are doctors who were going out of their way to try to compete for it. So if you didn't provide good jobs, you're not going to get the contract next year. Not only that, you're going to have, if you want a contract from another union, you're going to have to cut your prices so low to make it like, worth the risk. And I mean, that's the kind of competition that I want to see, where you have, it's all voluntary, you have competition where everyone's benefiting, and you're not having government come in and say, you know, we don't agree with it, so it ends. Um, marriage licenses were only created to prevent blacks and whites from getting married. And Asians and whites weren't even allowed to get married until uh, like the 1940s. And so we have this system where the government's dictating choices for us. Or government's business is put together to protect all of them. And then that's by protecting them when they undercut labor or they produce a shitty product or something like that. Um, I think as we continue evolving as individuals and society and recognizing that individuals have authority and power over decisions, give them more responsibility instead of relying on some malevolent leader to make decisions for me, I want to make them myself. We're going to see a division between, uh, I, I am optimistic and I hope that you'll see a division between the parties and government. But I also see that if we want to see that, we need to limit the size of government to help that process. I completely agree, I think I completely agree to the point. I, I'm not an anarchist. Okay. Uh, there, I mean, there's so many. I guess I would be. Uh, I go back and forth between anarchists and anarcho capitalists. But there's so many definitions of what a, an anarchist really is. I, I have friends who have this discussion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I mean, because I, I get, like, your example that you gave of the doctor is kind of. Uh, and that, that system that was kind of crushed by. by yeah. Like, I mean, I think that, that's. Uh, Really good example of a step towards somewhere that I think both of us would really want to see is something like a justice system. Yeah. But I think the problem, the problem for me only comes in, which is why I would say that at some point somebody's going to have to go in and tear down certain institutions, is because when you get at, there's certain institutions like, like, to where like, in trying to make, you brought up the idea of trying to make a society, either you, you can undercut labor to make more, you know, to, to yeah. be profitable. To, Labor, or you can do more. Try to be innovative. Uh, and be innovative. But that usually means technology. Yeah. And most of the, actually, almost all, when we're talking about like aviation, we're talking about the internet, you know, social media, and things like that, all of those things come out of a very coercive push towards industrialization of states. Question whether you're talking about communist states, whether you're talking about capitalist states. And pushing that kind of like, we need to be more productive as a society so we can build things up and do what? You know, kind of create more products, create more choices, open up more markets, where it's like, I'm pretty, most yeah. people can say they're pretty satisfied with, you know, a friend, a group of friends and they like, you know, shelters and food. And then the other things that are outside of that, to me, it's like, at what point in time do you start cutting off certain choices and saying, like, sorry, you know, the fact that you can purchase that, you have the ability to kind of like, gain wealth, so you can purchase a yacht that you can go sail on for like a couple of weeks out of the year. You know, to me, to me, that's something that I'm sorry. There's like a whole bunch of things that you just. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be interested in, in learning more about uh, how you came to this. It, it, it is an interesting that, that I've never heard of that government pushed industries in certain directions. Is that what you're saying? To, to produce more? 
Well, yeah, but I mean, it's kind of like the collusion. Like, to me, this is why I can't pull apart, I can't pull apart a capitalist system from, uh, government. from a government. To me, to me it's, it's not a matter of, like, saying, like, ooh, it's those bad politicians, or yeah. ooh, it's those bad bankers. It's like, they've inevitable. always been, I'm like, at one point in time, were they not, you know? It's like, I mean, like, look at John Locke, I mean, the guy friggin', and not only was he, like, a huge, like, uh, you know, philosopher of, like, you know, like, liberty and stuff like that, but he was also, um, hugely involved in the transatlantic slave trade, had a certain kind of, like, uh, interest in that kind of going on yeah. the way that it does. So, I mean, it's like, those kind of things are like, it's hard for me to get back to the time. And, yeah, but, but I'm not looking at the past, because we look at the past, I mean, there was more injustice 10 years ago, 20 years ago than there is now. I want to look at the future and say, how do we There's a lot yeah. more government, too. Yeah, there was like a lot. government now, we've been kind of government. The government's pretty weak. The military's pretty weak. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, but, but yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the government is pretty weak compared to private, <laughs> private, entities, private entities from the government. So, um, but I, you know, I, to say to just like get rid of government, so we don't want the government. Well, you know, these private entities are are setting the rules through the government. Yeah, I mean, it's like getting the government, I mean, getting the government out of the way. It's like, well, okay. First of all, I don't really see how that's possible. Uh, just to to create less, like, try to clear out the space and create less restrictions on the Private entities them. are just... Like leeches, you got burn them off. Continue to... <laughs> I, I, I think... Well, you have to change. I mean, you have to, like, if we're going to have a government, like, and I'm not just saying whatever government we have now, but, you know, if people if people are going to have a revolution, whatever, I mean, people are going to govern themselves. That's just what it means for Absolutely. people to make yeah. choices. Yeah. This government, it's like, what are you talking about? Do you have a government in some kind of democracy or do you have Yeah, I... I and... I try, so I, just, I, I, I try to be optimistic about people being able to recognize how to be, how to, how to create a just system. And, well, like, um, take environment, the environment. I mean, just this idea of destroying the EPA to get them to make so that there's less government. It's like, well, you know, if you do that, these private entities are not going <laughs> to, they're funny. not going to take, they're not going to do the right thing um, because it's profitable for them not to. Like, there's huge, there's huge profit there, in pollution. There, there, is, there is a discussion on, uh, Environmentalism in relation to private property rights, and they can do benefits. Like uh, two countries in Africa, one privatized the ownership of elephants, and one made it communal, so it's government property. Uh, the one that did the government, they're almost extinct, but 100 miles away, they have so many that they actually need them to be hunted. People are recognized. Uh, buffaloes could never be considered property, but cows could. Um, and there, there's, uh, I, I have to get going soon, but Walter Block has a great interview about environmentalism and the history of how government went away from protecting the individual to protecting corporations or these governments. But there's no privatizing. I mean, there, nobody's privatizing. Pollution. It's, it's the opposite of pollution. Yeah, <laughs> externalities are... The, the resource that's there. Yeah, it's externalities key. are a difficult thing to quantify. But in the past, um, when a railroood company or a factory had like, stood in the air and it got on your house, on your laundry, you could go to a court and say, look, and the, the businesses had to reimburse you. Yeah. There's then, a lot of value in creating those extra houses. But in 19, yeah, about uh, 18, during the Andrew Jackson era, um, the Supreme Court went away from that. Instead of going with the individual saying, look, you have, uh, you know, railroads, they'd come by and the sparks would start fires in, in uh, fields, and the farmers would be able to go to the company and say, you need to pay us. They know, and the courts would say, you know, railroad companies, you need to pay these farmers uh, because you created it. Uh, after the Andrew Jackson era, the Supreme Court said, no, no there's more social benefit to allowing this railroad to, to do this yeah. than it is for the individual. So now you, you no longer have the incentive for these individuals and the railroad company to prevent less spark. It's because it's the all government was going to say, well, there's more social good for you to be able to go. Uh, just as there's more social good for the pollution in the air than having to pay the people in the city. And that, that impact, that distortion or distraction within the market has led to this, this system where right now it's, if there's a, a negative externality, we have to use the government means to take care of it because it's so far removed from protecting the individual. It's, it's, it's well, do you don't think that it's like a little bit of a psychic change a little bit? A what? A psychic change? Yeah. Like that, I mean, because it's, we, we look at everything as a race of even people, even freaking people. Like, like, I mean, we use... 
corporations, for example. I mean, like, whatever. I'm not even going to give an example. Huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, prison. I mean, we, we, like, and I'm not even talking about, like, like, I mean, we, we're talking about, like, using people like Kleenex. Like, not like, like, where you just use them and throw them away. Like, if we, have, we are this huge disposable, like, community. I mean, not community. <laughs> No, well, 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 yeah, everything is, though. the environment, everything, everything is disposable. It's like, oh, we can get more, we can get more. And we really can't, that's like a farce. I mean, at some point, there will be no more. There will be no more, maybe not people, because we keep making more, but we can <laughs> do that for the time being. <laughs> but, um, but I like that activity. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, as far as, like, I think that it's about changing, about changing the, the zygais, though. It's like, you're talking oh, yeah, about, like, the names yeah, 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 talking yeah, about yeah. taking now. that, taking that focus off, you know what I mean? I mean, you're applying more responsibility to the recognize value. Well, yeah, like, yeah. hey, look, and this then, isn't a resource. I mean, does anybody know anything about the tragedy of the commons? Yeah. Like, okay, like, when you have, it's the tragedy of the commons, Olson's work. Like, you know, you have a bunch of farmers sharing a field, and they all have cows on it, everything's happy, and then one farmer, farmer puts an extra cow on it, and everybody's like, hey, he's got more cows than me. And so everybody puts an extra cow on it. And now there's no food for the cows and everybody's cows are dying. It's like, hello? Well, um, <laughs> like, this is what we're doing to our whole fucking world, people. <laughs> our, our labor company, our lumber companies, don't usually own the property. I can use that one. I can use that one. Play, like, all the trees on us. Uh, it's leased by the government. Uh, if you look at like Germany, which has private forests, they actually have increased the number of trees in that area because if you're going to cut it down. You need to understand like you need to put something back in there. So then, in 10 years, you're going to be able to reap it again. With the lease, you just paid for a time period, not for anything. And I think those are just some of the market reactions. You brought up like a key point that I think is the idea of recognizing certain things about the one. That's always the problem that I have with. High exposition, yeah. whether it's like Friedman's position or, or whether it's any sort of like uh, neoclassical liberal it's, it's this idea that that number one that they're doing science, they're doing math, they can kind of predict things and stuff like that. But the other thing hey, is, is, hey. that, is that like if you what can you, you have capitalism, can you have a profit-driven economy if you take into account all the external things? Or if you try to figure them in, not only the fact that you can't like, like yeah. they, they avoid them. They say, well, I can't quantify like somebody's well-being. I can't quantify the environment. You know, pretend <coughs> it's, it's not a cost. Well, well right. It Whereas it's like if you build all of those things, if you take in the environment into account, you take into account well-being into account. If you bring all those externalities in, you erase all the problems. Right. Um, to me, that's the to me that's the idea. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think. You can't. I don't know if you, you erase all the problems that you have Absolutely. if you're able to quantify all the externalities. Because again, we can't quantify all the externalities. Like, um, yeah, but for uh, example, like in, in Europe, the price of gas is like, I don't know, eight, ten dollars a gallon because they try to build that those yeah, externalities into that. Well, that's, yeah, that's really the question whether you could in fact have. But the point yeah. is, is that Without people can, can you have profits if you recognize all externalities? Um, I don't know if, if I think you, you could still have profit. You have to take into account all the externalities in some form. But I don't think because we're, we're unable to recognize how to do that, that government needs to step in. Oh, no, I, I completely agree with that because I think, but I think that like the thing is, let's say, let's say you get like this is what I was kind of talking about about like we don't like Wells Fargo or something. So it's like there, we find a company that's polluting the environment now, <coughs> and we, and so we, we agree that we don't want any sort of government attempt to try and mediate the relationship between that company and the environment. Yeah. And we're just going to let them do their thing. So if a whole bunch of people collectively agree that you know Dow Industries or something like that are you know the solution of the public. Seeing that you're destroying not only my community, you're destroying my environment, okay. you're destroying my livelihood. I'm not gonna like try and solicit. I'm not trying to get government to like put some restrictions on you. I'm gonna tear down your back. I'm gonna blow up your shit. You know. I mean, to me, that's to me, that's the response that when you get government out of the way. Oh, you, using violence. 
Well, no, no, it's not using violence, but I mean, it's like, if you get government out of the way, to where, like, to me, government's like that kind of, like, nice mediator that says, that's going to put, like, some restrictions on nice. companies yeah. to do it. You know, they, you know, like, yeah. oh, okay. look, at, look at our policies we have in place where, you know, we're regulating their ability to pollute. So let's take that away, you know, and then all those people are, are going to be like, so, but at the same time, okay. the, the government doesn't have restrictions, but then the government can't call up the police it, it, and be it, like, it, all, it, um, yeah. they're coming to tear um, us down because we're polluting their communities. Uh, yeah. Well, if you didn't have, <laughs> yeah. Um, this government protection goes both ways. Yeah, you go, it doesn't go both ways. So you're, I'm not advocating for a government that has no authority or power. Oh, no, I, yeah, I think most, like, uh, liber right libertarian. I'm a left leader. But I mean, I'm the way I think of it is I think that if someone is going to infringe, even if, like if a corporation is infringing someone else's rights, then the government is there, and the government is there to protect people. So you know, the government or like the corporation is polluting and they're causing harm to the community. The government has the right to come in and say, hey, we need to, you know, compensate. Right, you know, figure out another way so you're not harming that community. And, and that's how it was, like I said, before the Jack there. Was, uh, if the railroad came by and the sparks from the railroad caught my field on fire. Well, you should account for that change. Because like, I think we. Well, okay, so, so governments no, or businesses no longer had the incentive to protect themselves against those kind of laws. Yeah, but what? Uh, yeah. Stronger labor. Yeah, so. I no longer, if I was a business, I go, okay, every time I start a fire, I have to pay out money. And then all of a sudden, I go, oh, the government says I don't have to? I'm no longer going to try to find or spend energy trying to stop those fires. I'm just not going to give a shit. But I would love to see a system where if Dow is starting to pollute in my neighborhood, I could go to the government and say, look what's happening. They are causing, uh, all my trees are dead. I lost out on all this. I think I deserve this amount of retribution because this got destroyed out of my control. I think the government has a role to go in and say, okay, like now you uh, created a situation forcefully on this individual, a group of individuals, you need to compensate them. And then you can put a price tag on what they're doing. And then it, is it more beneficial to keep it going and pay people off or to change? And then if they say, okay, because uh, there are situations where it's easier just to pay the fine than to change the activity. Yeah. Well, go back to the individual and say, look, you're not getting your fair share because they still think that it's cheaper to do this, to, to, to pollute than to actually fix it. And then you can have an Occupy kind of movement where you have collectively people come together and say, look, we don't agree with what's going on here. We need to change. <coughs> and, and, and that's the kind of important mechanism, market mechanism I want to see enforced in the future instead of government just saying, Oh, we have a blanket law that says you can't pollute 10 millimeters of X, Y, and Z. And if you do, you're going to pay, pay you. Uh, you're going to have to pay a million dollars. Well, where's that money going to? Not right. to the individual well, so like community. It's going to go to uh, government to put together a no nuclear submarine. The, the individuals are, are screwed. And that's the kind of system we're fighting against. Or students for liberty is trying to promote a more free society, especially on academics. Uh, that's. Essentially, I gotta get going to, uh, we, we came together because uh, the idea of having this kind of open discussion with a professor is very scary because you might get a downgrade on your... Can I chime in for just a second yeah. while you guys are still talking about the lack of government? Uh, Belgium is just now, uh, on November 27th, uh, signed in their new government, sworn in their new government after 541 days of peaceful non-governments. Governance. They had no government for 541 days, and everything was just fine. If everything I, went just fine. If I can recognize, uh, recommend a great book, it's uh, The Invisible Hook by Peter Leeson. It's a really easy read, and it's about the social construction of uh, pirate ships, and that they they were actually extremely peaceful and, and malevolent to everyone. Like they didn't just go and like destroy ships and take the loot. Like, they had this whole system about how everything was going to be decided. There's competition for the pirates, and they were actually a lot more socially. They, they treated people more equitably or equally than uh, some of the private individuals because they had great pirate, pirates. Are, they, they, pirate, yeah. There's a book called Pirate Two. The pirates are a good example. Actually. I, I would definitely read it to yeah. Um, the Invisible Hood is a really short read. You can probably get it free online. Um, Hugh Lee's a really cool guy. But yeah, I mean, people. I I, I think 
people were given the choice, well, actually, we'll make good choices to be respectful of the decision. Today, uh, further questions? We're gonna come on. This is a lot of fun. Are you gonna take off? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. we're, we're having like an uh, anarchist 101. <laughs> Who's doing that? Uh, myself and a couple others. 